All right, I'm back. Cats have nommed pretty quickly, I might add. I'm still not sure why it's not picking up these saplings. I just, I, it's, it should be within range and it's not getting a redstone signal, so it's not disabling it, except for the, probably the one little pulse that it's getting here, if at all. So I don't know. <laughs> Um, I have to figure that out because I don't think it's getting any saplings in there. Uh-uh. You know what it might... No, because that works in other things. I was just thinking maybe it can't put stuff into an open crate. I guess a way to check that. Oops. Oh, I might have to go separate the cats for a moment. That appears to have been the problem. Maybe not. There's one still sitting here. I don't know. Why is it doing that? Mm. Alright, so that's a flaw. We have to figure out why it's not... I mean, I may just need to relocate that. I don't know. <clears throat> Anyone know? Anyone know so I don't have to try and figure out? so pretty. Okay, we're going to turn it off. Turn it off. Okay. The other thing I want to figure out is um, that dispenser stuff. When it only has one space underneath of it. That's a good point. That's a good point. That could be what, because I've had that too, where I've been baffled with why it's not putting stuff down. Hmm. I'll mess with it. Anyway, the other thing I want to do is some quick testing on... The, the dispenser mechanic for planting, I saw, let me just grab some dirt and I need um, water and farmland. Let's do this. Um, I saw an image that I could have swore that it didn't work. <clears throat> this is what I saw. I 
don't know why I needed to count that out. <clears throat> now I know it does not work if it's one block above because then the crop will never grow ever um because you need more than one block space above it so this granted it doesn't get enough light we'd have to make sure to get light in here if this works this would mean we could make massive farms eventually um yeah all right so all of these have seeds um dispenser planting is in quark and batania so we know this works when they're next to each other nope maybe it used to work in like 110 or 17 um batania and it was changed so yeah i saw the image so nope it has to be this way so those of you who don't know, yeah, if you uh, apply a redstone signal to a dispenser against a crop block, it plants it. That's that's what I saw that I, th yeah, you can't do it from underneath. So apparently the check is in the code is it has to be adjacent to the air block above a farm block boo <laughs> um we did have a pretty decent setup those like the farms that were like circular and just were stacked um yeah i'm nowhere nearly i'm still early game um so yeah So I'm, I would have to figure out how to stack, how to get as many farm blocks as possible in the space that a hopper hawk can pick up everything, or do we need to do a space that a drum of the wild? Um, I don't think when you look at a drum of the wild, you can see the range. Can you? No. Okay, so let's look it up. Drum of the wild. The range is 25 by 25 by 7. I'm going to write that down because otherwise I'll just keep looking it up. Twenty-five by twenty-five by seven. Now, it also has an additional limit in case you don't know. It will only harvest thirty-two each pulse. So even if I had a full area of jam-packed twenty-five twenty-five by seven, it will only harvest 32 each pulse, which is why you either need to pulse it really quickly or you need to pulse it, um, pulse multiple. I think in my previous one, I did multiple. And if I recall correctly, it uproots, it uproots, um, seeds as well. Oops. Yep. So you should only pulse it when this is fully grown. And with agricarnations, it can speed it up. I do, I wonder if, do see, do crops give off an observe, um, a detection for how far along they are? Probably.
probably not. Their state. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I don't think I can do it with Observer either because it would change com each time it. It's this way. Yeah, each time. So that's not what I want either. Okay. I was wondering if I could have one wheat be the monitoring wheat, and when that was fully gone, it would trigger the whole farm. Vanilla way of harvesting could be a solution. That's true. That, that could make, mm. That would mean our crops could be, our crop spaces could be too wide and eight long, probably. And we could have um, we could have the water flow from here water blocks beneath the spencers yeah even longer oh well that's true um but we could only put them too wide because we'd want to we'd need to be able to plant Oh, you know, I can see a crop spiral in my future with those step downs. So like I decide um, the, the, the range of the drum of the wild would govern how big the circle is, but we'd go to the edge of the circle and then we'd step down and go this way to the edge and step down and go this way to the edge and just keep stepping down. Because then we could only need two buckets of water to go the eight, and you keep going down and down and down. All right, so if we tucked the water, um, we need to be here and. Yep. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then this would be the step down part. Dang it. And then continue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we could go further than um, seven. I just decided to turn it here because of the space. But with the 25, we could go out and down, out and down three times. And then turn it right around there. So we need water here.
keep this hydrated. We're just gonna put that. So then we'd have dispensers all along here. Blocks there. I guess that's not needed, is it? Dispensers down here. We're just trying to shape it so that it doesn't like make a mess. And then when we triggered the farm. Okay, so we needed to turn it down there. Definitely some testing would be required for sure. Because <clears throat> if we didn't want to do a spiral, we could probably do a zigzag. That would definitely take care of this big wide open space that would be unused. Because we could turn it and then the next set of farms would be this way. And we'd have different water sources, but I that's something we could think about too. I'm not ready for this in my world at all. So yeah, we're so resource deficit right now, but um, it's been fun trying to figure it out. Yeah. I don't even think we're ready for this yet because we need so much iron for these force relays. Uh, and mana pearls for the prisms. And living wood for the spreaders and living rock for the pools. We don't have those either. Uh, so I have to figure out how to, to dispense mana to all, I guess sparks would be fine to dispense mana to all those pools. And if our diluted pools large enough to keep just keep diluted pools full, um, look at that it's actually working now. It's putting them into the hopper. Mm, okay. Um, oof. Hello, Atlas. Thank you for startling me. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so so we have the tree farm plan. I think I'm totally gonna do this. Um, I may have to build it slowly over time. It, I may not. I may have to do just one force relay and and however many tree spots it can grow to, and then keep adding to it as I have resources. Um, yeah. The next thing we might as well do some more testing because I'm in a testing mood apparently. Um, let's do it out here. Let's get our mana glass and divide out this spot. This is the failed um, setup. It does not work. So yeah, nope, new workies. This is that's the Jancy automated runic altar. Um, it's definitely made for an older version of Batania because something wasn't working right and I just can't get it to do what I want it to. So the next thing that we have is the Endoflame generator and we're gonna, we, I really prefer to just limit the size of the farm based on the random carpus that will be placing the flowers. Okay, so if we get a floating one and we put it somewhere here, it's 
that is the um, X and Z size and the vertical size is did I have that written somewhere oh I may have removed it I used to have it on a sign or something let's look it up the ran and Carpus has a 13 <coughs> Uh, range of placement 17 by 17 by 13 I cannot remember how far down not as far down as it is up where is the ran and carpus in here it's right there and it does one two three four below So if we put you up higher, all right. That's not going to overlap, is it? Into oh, it needs. It needs mana or it won't reach as far. Um, give you some mana. But we need to move you. <laughs> we need to move it because otherwise it reaches too into there. Okay, so 17. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So in that range is where we want to put all of our end of flames. So if we stack them. Similar to this, but we could put far more in there. Let's give you a grass block. I want to make sure that it'll reach these and then start with that. Look at all the end of flames we could place. <laughs> Every single one of those could be end of flames. Now, two things. We'll have to build this, grow this over time because we do not have the tree farm. We don't have enough fuel to run this sort of size farm, let alone, let alone the fact that we could stack it. To here this would be a level this would be a level that could be a level and I think that level 
Um, yeah, I doubt. Yeah, we'd have a dish issue with getting mana spreaders and um, whatnot in here. So let's give you another stack of these. Stack of these. I want to see you place them up here. All right, so we could probably not even keep up with the decay. Because this is more than one a second, if you think about it. Um, <laughs> we'd have to craft them, keeping up with that. So, um, yeah. But this is just to help me start visualizing what I could do for a farm. So we're going to need to put um, charcoal dispensers in here. And endo, so we have endo flame range to consider. And where in the world are we putting the mana spreaders? <laughs> so all of this stuff has to be figured out now. Now that we know the random carpus range, it did place there and there. I do not believe it could do higher. which the higher one would be this space because we need to have flower space. So I don't believe it could go there. Make a pixel cat. <laughs> and I don't believe it can go below. I don't think I've misplaced the... We'll find out in a moment. Oh, crud. <laughs> it can go lower. Oh, dear. Well, so that means this rent will move this rent and carpus up. Yeah, we'll move you. We'll move you up. Um, to this spot. If we do that that get rid of this available spot. Let's find out. We moved it up. So um Okay, did not go down there this time. Great. Not that we will ever need this much. No, just so we know. Just so we know. We're gonna just line this up though. So this was this one too. All right, so this one should not. Okay, good, good. 
else, that's it. There's no way we're going to have this many rows. Just re-emphasizing that for you guys. Um, the next thing we need to know is the endoflame range. And I, yeah, I have my chart, my chart open because, um, but I think it's seven by seven. One, two, three. Yes, it's seven by seven plus seven by seven by seven. All right. In a 17 by 17 grid, how many 7 by 7s can there be? There's two. We can't do three because that would be 21. So that shrinks us down to a smaller spot um, already. Okay. So we're going to start carving out the, sh the size so that um, I have two sections of 7x7 seven seven in here. I think what we're going to do is so that we can visualize this directly underneath the Ran and Carpus is where we'll make our breaks. All right, so there we've got it divided up into four so far. And if we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this needs to go as well. So there's the 7x7 seven seven pads where for sure this middle one, that's the middle one's range. To be fair, it could be larger, like the the coal dropping spot, could we could put some on the outside here because it would reach some of these, but we're trying to reduce the number of uh, coal dispenser arrays. Um, and it's, I, th yeah, um, we're going to do our lovely pressure plate setup. Okay. And an open crate. And it will be... There. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. We could go higher. We can keep moving the open crate up and having wireless redstone trigger the dropping mechanism. Um, so whenever the pressure plate is free, it would hit trigger like what we have in our world with the force relay and the redstone block. And it would do that for the um, open crate. It could totally do that for the open crate. 
So we would have one on all of these in the middle. It's just starting with the closest here. Uh-huh. Now to think about mana. Dis mana. Well, one thing to keep in mind, mana does not collide with flowers so if we did we're doing just the basic ones um, wonder how many mana spreaders we're gonna need if we were to make this size farm remember we're starting small and growing from there. That's why our hydrangea farm is not this big right now. Um, yeah, we can't we can't run it. So we need to start small. So the way we'll start small here is just not produce as many endo flames. So there won't be as many in these pads. Um, but I still need to plan for the eventuality of having mana spreaders. Um. So I think what I'm going to do is move this guy. Here. And we need to rebind the random carpus, otherwise it won't work. We put pools. at these points here. be our gathering from the spreaders. Probably gonna want one in the middle. As well. So, to get there... You there. You there. And do the same thing on all of them. For the middle. This is going to let's make it so that the all the mana goes that direction. Let's take you out because we need to do that. 
to this one. But the rest of these in the corner. I'm trying to figure out like I have how the mana is moving in certain directions to try to conglomerate in one spot, try to gather in one spot. So that's what I'm working on first is getting these buffer pools which will likely start as diluted very like I mean I don't foresee it needing darn chicken is just <laughs> producing a whole bunch of stuff in that altar. 